back everybody to another episode of Vita Time, episode 89. We're back for another week. We got Shiryuki last week and then they decided, you know what, we're going to drop the Shiryuki support right after her. So we didn't get a chance to cover them. So we're going to cover them now and all the other stuff and some very, very disconcerting news that I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about. I feel like it's exciting news, but again, like you said, we'll talk about it. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about it. Anyway, before we get started, if you're interested in buying any cards from TCG Player, please use our affiliate link down below. Your purchases through this link help support the channel so we can bring more great videos to you guys. And with that script to fire out of the way, let's go straight into the league, starting us off with the Shiryuki support card grade 2. Ice Fang Princess Tsurara Hime. Yeah, I got that right on the first try. Hey. Anyway, it's a very interesting grade 2, as, as her effect is Auto Vanguard. When placed, you may call a card with Shuriken as card name from your hand to rear guard. If you call, uh, if you called at the end of the turn, ret uh, return that unit. That, not it. Now I can't read. Return the unit card called with this effect to your hand, and if you have one or less cards in your soul, soul charge one. Oh, now I get how this works. Yeah, you call down the OG Shuriken, you soul blast two. And then bounce it back and you still charge the one, so it's only still blasted one for the Shiryuki. Nifty. Anyway, her uh, other ability is auto rearguard at the end of your turn. If you have a Vanguard with Shiryuki in its card name, put this unit into your soul, choose one of your normal units on rearguard, and turn it to your hand. So it can be it can be the Shiryuki that you bounce back to your hand, or it can be any other normal unit. So if you want a 10k shield back to your hand. Um, fun fact of that part is the way you play with that is you use the new Shiryuki to call a new Shiryuki and have this on the board and at the end of the turn you put in soul and bounce that new Shiryuki call from drop to your hand. Very nifty. A lot of bounce mechanics. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's go straight to the grade one with no bounce mechanics. Uh, so Apprentice yo yo Yokai. Yokai. Uh, Sesamiguki? Yep. Yeah. That. All right. Surprisingly. Uh, Auto Vanguard. When placed, look at seven cards from the top of your deck, reveal it to one card with Shiryuki and his card name from among them, put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. Then auto rearguard once per turn when your vanguard with Shiryuki and his uh, card name is placed, you may soul charge one. I mean, does everything the deck wants to do. Exactly. It fills your soul and it searches for your Shiryukis. Pretty sure. straightforward. I mean, yeah, a little bit too good if you ask me, but <laughs> you know, that's here, no there. Anyway, enough of this Shiryuki talk. I know everybody was wanting to say it's on the thumbnail. You guys are here to see him. You guys are there here to hear our opinion about him. We got Chaos Breaker support. We got a big boy himself. Before we get to get to the big boy, I'm, hear gotta, hmm? I'm hearing bullshit. What? I, come in, I hear coming in bullshit. Oh, come on. <laughs> we gotta get through the support. We're gonna start off with a grade one Starvader Craving Claw. So, Starvader names are back. And this one's especially mm. good for Starvaders, mm -hmm. premium especially. Auto Vanga Rearguard. When an attack or the attack it boosts, it hits a Vanguard. Look at five cards from the top of your deck. Reveal up to one card with Starvader and its card name from among them. Put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. Its other ability is Act. Rear guard. If your opponent's Vanguard is grade three or greater, cost. Put this unit into your soul. Choose up to one mm. of your opponent's lock cards and unlock it. If you unlock the card, choose one of your opponent's rear guards other than the unit unlocked and lock it. So. When this got revealed, we basically knew what Chaos was going to do, but mm. not to the full extent. Yep. And this is just an amazing card to go, you know what? I don't like that back row rear guard. I'm going to lock it first. And I don't like that front row rear guard. We're going to unlock that, lock this, and then Chaos is going to take care of it. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that it doesn't disappear at all, it just when it hits, or the attack it boosted hits, means that this card is just going to plus you cards every time. Oh yeah, it's like Vanguard, hit, all right. Put it behind the Vanguard. Swing, swing, swing. <laughs> Eventually your opponent's gonna take hits and you're just gonna plus off of this. And, and it gets any Starvader itself, Chaos, and even the Grade 2. Oh, well, nice segue. Uh, splitting Image Starvader's Zirconium. Uh, auto Vanguard Rearguard when placed. If you have a Vanguard with Starvader in its card name, cost counter boss 1. Your opponent looks at the top card of his or her deck, puts that card to an open Rearguard as blocked. If that locked card was put in the back row, you draw a card and this unit gets power plus 10,000. Yay. Uh, continuous rear guard. If your opponent's vanguard is greater than your greater, your opponent has a lock card. The original crit of all your vanguards becomes two. I mean, that's just, that's just good. Like so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you give crit, which is great, and then it locks cards, which is great. <laughs> and it's balanced, because it's not just luck over a unit, it's, it has to be an open rear guard. So if your opponent decides to flood the board, you, you can't use it. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be a little bit more nifty. 
And then you also give the opponent the choice of, okay, you're gonna lock in the front, cool, you lost an attacker. You wanna lock in the back, cool, I gain benefits. All right, you're talking like, you know, your opponent's not gonna have a lock card and, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. Exactly, but you see my point. Yeah. Anyway, also I love the fact that it says your opponent lock card, the original critical of all your vanguards becomes two. Hmm. Some nice legion support you got there. Uh huh. Anyway, moving on. Ha! Granted, chronologically there's dual knight support. We're gonna skip that dual knight support and go straight for chaos. Like we're gonna come back to dual knights. We need to read chaos first. Yes. We need the big boy himself. We need to know. Star Vader, Chaos Breaker Dragon. The man's back. The man is back. And as you can already notice, he doesn't have a marker symbol. Mm -mm. But don't worry. Don't you worry your pretty little head. He gets <laughs> one. Anyway, he has three abilities. Continuous Vanguard Rigor during your turn. If your opponent has a lock card, this unit gets 10k power. Uh, act Vanguard. Once per turn, cost counter bless one. Your opponent gets an imaginary gift force. You choose one of your opponent's rear guards and lock it. Last but not least, auto vanguard. When your opponent's lock card is unlocked, so blast one, retire one of those unlocked units, you draw a card, your opponent removes a total of two markers from his or her circles or protect from his or her hand, and you gain an imaginary gift force for each marker or protect removed. Hallelujah. Yeah, you asked for, you know, that stride skill in standard for a long time and Bushy heard your cries. I love how we speculated Chaos's ability not too long ago about mm -hmm. how he's probably gonna opponent lock like he used to. Or maybe they're gonna go this weird route and actually do the stride ability and him stealing markers or, mm -hmm. you know, take, uh, destroying markers. No, no, Bushy escalated and said, let's combine those and steal markers. You know what's funny? Like, he had the, um, the way you, we had this thought was almost the exact same process I had when I was talking about um, Elon Sonnet's Dragon. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, it'd be great if they had this, they had this, they had this, and like... Give them all of it. I mean... And against 10k power on Vanguard and Rearguard. Bushy, where's your wiretap? <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, I love this. Like, it's not... Let's get this straight out of the way. It's not meta-breaking. Mm -hmm. And it's not bad. Like, it's, it's just right. Like, this card, this deck now, is just right. It stops heavy force, uh, heavy marker generating mm -hmm. decks, but it doesn't do well against certain decks. Like tokens are a bane. Anything that doesn't have a board like Night Rose is a bane. Like there is good matchups and there's bad matchups, but that's the beauty of this, and I fucking love it. This is put it straightforward and simple. This is the anti meta. <laughs> very, very much. I do want to point out one thing that I have, for some reason, either I've been missing or I haven't seen a lot of people mention, especially some other YouTubers. No criticism to them. Mm -hmm. uh, Chaos's last ability of unlock. Because it's worded, when your opponent's lock card, singular, is unlocked, pay the cost, do this. Doesn't matter if it says un uh, unlocked units, plural, and retire one of those, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It looks at the condition. So if three cards, example, if three cards were unlocked at the end of your opponent's turns, Chaos's effect will trigger three times. So you can pay three Soul Blast and get rid, rid of a total of six markers on your opponent's board and draw three cards. And make six for, uh, protect, uh, Force Markers. And make six Force Markers, yeah. Also, one more clear uh, distinction because I saw it on the comment section of our videos. Just because the effect says your opponent removes a total of two markers does not mean if they only have one marker, they remove none. You do much of the skill as possible. That has always yeah. been the way with Vanguard. That, that's how Angle Blader works. That's how a lot of other cards work. Mm -hmm. If they can't remove two, they remove at least one. That's just how it goes. There is one rule that is floating around though that is probably true. Which is? Um, if you're not a force tech, and you do not have no, force No, no, we're not, no, no, you're not doing it, no, <laughs> shut up. Just make sure you stock up no. the force markers. shut up, no. Just in case. Don't, no, <laughs> shut up. Anyway, Jewel Knights got leaked at the same time as Chaos on Tuesday's stream. So let's see what they can do. All right, Charging Jewel Knight, Mor Morbidus? Yep. Yeah. Act, rear guard, cost, counter blast one, put a normal unit from your drop zone to the bottom of your deck. Still charge one, and one of your units with Jewel Knight in this card name gets power plus five until the end of the turn. 
Then auto Vanguard rear guard when your other unit is placed on this unit's circle, draw a card. See, I know exactly what all the cards do, so let's go through them and then let's cover yes. everything else. So we got the grade two, which is basically almost a carbon copy of the grade one, almost. Mm -hmm. uh, explode Jewel Knight, uh, Laylee. Uh, when it attacks, auto rear guard, when it attacks, Put two normal units from your jobs on the bottom of your deck in any order. Soul Charge one, and this unit gets five K until the end of that battle. Mm -hmm. Auto Vanguard Rear Guard, when your other unit is placed on this unit circle, that placed unit gets 10 K until the end of turn. So you see the thing going, and mm -hmm. Ashley. This cat dials it up a bit. Going. Uh, Pure Heart Jewel Knight Ashley. Auto Vanguard Rear Guard at the end of the battle that it attacked costs Soul Blast 2. Search your deck for up to one Grade 2 or less card with Jewel Knight in this card name and call it Rear Guard. Shuffle your deck. If this unit is on Vanguard, you call 2 instead of 1. Pretty good. Auto Vanguard Rear Guard when your other unit is placed on this unit's circle costs Counter Blast 1. That placed unit gets critical plus 1 in the end of turn. So I want you to imagine this is a building. This building has been rented as a club. <laughs> this club is called Multi Attack Club. <laughs> they just opened the door to the Royals and said, come in, bud. <laughs> this is, I mean, yeah, and this has been Royal Paladin's been leaning, honestly. Like, they've been, like, lacking behind with everything multi-attacking, so this really helps a lot. Like, be, being able to pilot this deck and against Chaos, and yes, he probably should have locked front row. Fuck that, I don't care. It showcases the, what both do. Yeah, the fact that you can get up to three attacks on only one circle mm -hmm. is fucking crazy because Ashley's a Vanguard rear guard. Mm -hmm. So you can call over her and whatever you call over her gains a critical if you CB, but it, it's another a swinger. Mm. Like this deck has so much fucking pressure and potential just from piloting it. And it keeps cycling. Like the grade two, oh, I just used my grade two and grade one or my, my grade three. Let's just put them back and have them saved up for later. Oh. Grade one, put that back. Grade two, put these back. Ashley, let's grab what we just put back on the bottom and put it to the board. Yeah. And more and more and more. Just, and, and, and in the cycle. I just love the fact that all three effects have basically a break card. It's always a break of time. <laughs> Fun fact. Hmm? So far, I think, do we see another break card unit in this set so far? In this set? Yes, Dauntless. Yeah, Dauntless support we're going to cover. Which, spoiler alert, also has the theme of brick ride. Yeah, right. but it has a specific ride. This is basically, oh look. This is also the best part about this deck. Especially when you have the grade one. Like, hmm. This grade one is good, but I want it to drop it back in my deck so I can call it again. Let me just call over it and draw a card. Oh look, I have the grade two in the front mm. row. Maybe I want some extra power columns. Let me just call over it, plus 10k. I mean, as that Jewel and I said before, they called over themselves and they, they actually use a brick ride. They fit it flavorfully. This is, this is honestly an amazing deck. Like, and the best part is, uh, Vanguard Insider probably mentioned it and our good friend Sean from Winning Image uh, had a video on it. Go find it and check it out. This deck has the potential in force to make seven attacks. Three Ashleys in the front row. Go fucking ham, bro. <laughs> and that's not, we don't even get started with this in premium. <laughs> I will say one thing. In the proxy play we did against Chaos with Jewel Knights, mm -hmm. I was using a grade one promo that has not been confirmed for English period, which is sad because the card is basically meant for this. Mm -hmm. I forget the card's name. It's basically a grade one that says when your grade two unit is placed uh, not from hand, you can put the grade one into your soul and give the one of the placed units 15k power. This is amazing for Jewel Knights. Yeah, especially when you give the crit to it. Exactly, give the crit, give the power, and it fills the soul. Mm -hmm. It does everything the deck wants. Anyway, enough of June Knights. Let's keep moving on, moving on, moving on. We, for some reason, got to see a lot of promos, and we're finally hitting that weird old promo where the promos are just not good. Uh, some of them are useful. Some of them are useful. Some of them are like, eh. Some of them were useful when we talk about other cards down the road. You mean like this guy? You mean like Triple Dark Armor? Okay, this guy, probably not that good. <laughs> it's a Shadow Paladin Grade 2, 10k, and has only two abilities that are only useful in the Grade 2 game. Continuous Vanguard during your turn, all your front row triple dark knight, uh, dark armor get 5k, making them 15ks. If you have three of them. If you have three of them. Oh, you know how you can get three of them? Act, Vanguard Rigor cost, Soul Blast Moon, Retiree Rigor, not named dark armor, now once per turn, mind you. Search your deck for up to one triple dark armor, 
Call it a rear guard and shuffle your deck. So for two soul and two rear guards, you can get two specific grade twos on the board and they have 15k units in the front row during your grade two game and that's it. They're 25k hey. on there, but yeah. Wait, what? They're getting 15, so they'd be 25 on there. No, Vanguard only. It's like your Mur oh, fucking Murakumo. Oh, fair enough. It's like your Murakumo card. Fair. Now you see why I shit. Yeah, that, that is pretty cool. This is basically the Murakumo card in Shadows. Why well, didn't they have Rearguard on there? It would have been great. It would have been great. If they've had the Rearguard, Vanguard Rearguard, 5k to every single Triple Dark Armor, yeah. I'd say yes, fucking run it. It would be amazing in Witches. Yeah, because it would give you that early game you've been missing. Yeah. So sad. Well, moving on. Like, like I said, no. Anyway, uh, yes. More promos. So, Werewolf Ketzer? Yep. Ketzer. Auto, when retired from Guardian Circle, we put this card into your soul. This is a dark regular, by the way. Gee, I yeah. wonder why. Uh, Act soul, cost, buying this card. Soul charge 2. I like this. It's like a cheaper creeper. This is OG creeper. What are you talking about? This is literally OG creeper skills. Buying it from your soul. soul uh, oh, not oh, binding. I'm oh, sorry. It goes to the OG creeper goes to the bottom, but it's pretty much the same skill as OG creeper. But it goes to soul from Guardian Circle. That's extra OG creeper. There. <laughs> and at least OG creeper, you can keep putting it back. I mean, finding space. Oh, for this. Jesus Christ. Premium OG creeper with new Emblem Master. Put them all the back, Soul Charge 6. Emblem Master, put them all in, put them all back, Soul Charge 6. You just realized this? Yes! I don't play DI! Anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, this is. Pretty decent, but the problem is, is probably find the room for it. Replace creepers if you don't, if you don't care about having a 13k booster or mm -hmm. attacker True. that costs CB to do this. Fair. It's not a bad card. It's a cheaper creeper for a reason. Anyway, speaking of cheaper stuff, um, Desert Gunner Gudan. Um, I'm gonna read the effect and don't let it surprise you because right now it doesn't seem like much, but when we get later to a certain card, it's gonna seem like a lot. Yeah. Uh, auto Vanguard at the end of your opponent's turn, if your opponent has one or less front row rear guards, Cell Blast 1 and draw cards. It's a, you know, easy plus on Vanguard, mm -hmm. especially for Narkami. Exactly. Uh, auto Rear Guard at the end of the battle that it attacked. If your Vanguard's attack hit this turn, put this unit into your Soul and draw card. Now, having the Vanguard uh, attack hit in most Narkami decks is going to be a, a little bit difficult depending on how the game goes. There's only like two Vanguards right now that do that, which is Thunderbreak Dragon and uh, Dragon Kaiser Vermilion. I mean, yeah, swinging and I'm, I'm talking just Vanguard and Vanguard. Oh, Vanguard and Vanguard, Vanguard, Vanguard. Like, not a lot of Vanguards are going to actually hit. True. Uh, yeah. You spoiling <laughs> it, sure, Vermilion. Like, <laughs> yes, we'll see why. Anyway. We're gonna get to that later. We're gonna get to that later. No. Anyway, uh, moving on, moving on, moving on. We got some Kagero support. Finally, Duntless stuff comes back, and our predictions were a bit wrong. It's not broken. No. It's decent. It's pretty decent. So, Dragon Knight. He's hot. His hat. His hat! <laughs> it's high shot. Yeah. His hat. His. <laughs> Auto rear guard, one place, cost counter blast one, soul blast one, draw a card, choose one of your opponent's back row rear guards and retire it. Oh hi, that looks like, uh, what's his name, from the trial deck. Uh, embodiment of Warp of Power? Yeah, but it draws a card and doesn't gain power. Yeah. Uh, Auto run road upon, look at five cards from the top of your deck, reveal up to one grade three or greater card from among them, put it into your hand, shelf your deck. I mean, it follows them with this whole gimmick. Mm -hmm. This is what I was talking about earlier about wink wink, there's a break ride chain. And it's another great, uh, great three searcher, which is honestly not bad. Like, very good, you mm -hmm. know, right chain and decent effect. Like, cannabis one, soul blast one may be hefty, but in certain decks, it's like, all right, I'll pay it, I'll draw a card, and maybe I'll pop something. Exactly. Anyway, moving on, moving on, moving on. Um, we saw Nurakami support, because you know how they love to just throw a Kagero and then go back to normal. Yep. And we saw um, a great one for Nurakami um, Thunder. Volat Dragon. From the Volat Dragon. Auto Vanguard Rigor, when placed, look at five cards from the top of your deck. Reveal it to one Dragon, Dragonic Kaiser Vermilion, or a Spark Arrow Dragon from among them. Put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. If you put a card into your hand, discard a card from your hand. And it also has Auto Rigor, when your Vanguard's attack hits, this unit gets 5k until the end of the turn. So, it searches the old. Vermilion and Spark Arrow Dragon, which is interesting, and it gains 5k for every Vanguard's hit. And hit on every. It's gonna get pretty big depending on what you're going against. Which is not bad. It's a basically a grade 3 searcher for, for specific two cards. Yeah. And it has Vanguard Rearguard too, so. 
And again, Bushy decided to, to drop more some, things on us. <laughs> yeah, let's let's cover let's let's first cover the Nurakami stuff. Then we're gonna jump back to Cargo. Then we're gonna jump back into something else special that drops out of nowhere. So, Alex. All right, Spark Arrow Dragon, the Grade Two. Uh, act Rear Guard. If you have a Vanguard with Kaiser in its card name, cost Soul Blast One. Retire this unit. Search your deck for up to one card with Kaiser in its card name and ride it as stand. Mm -hmm. Shuffle your deck and until the end of turn when your opponent's rear guard will be retired, bind it instead of retiring it. Hard ones per turn. Yes. Um, um, this is a great way to make markers. Um, <laughs> great way to fix your rides. Um, and a great way to, you know, say screw you to your units because <laughs> they're never going to die. They're going to just get back to the blue. Question. Why the fuck? Was this not just made into an order? <laughs> I'm not wrong! You're not wrong. You have this in hand. You're gonna call it. You're gonna activate its ability, retire it, and soul blast one to rewrite and make a marker. Why not just go from hand to drop zone immediately? I mean, what if you want to use it as an actual unit? When? I mean, in the early game, sure. And then you got someone pop it, and it's like, well, that's you. that was point. What happens I lost if, my plus. What happens when you run out of Kaisers? It's the dead unit, that, a dead order in your hand. It could be a unit. If you run out of Kaisers, you're either doing something extremely wrong, or you're about to lose. <laughs> I'm not wrong. You're it's not like wrong. A, I mean, it's an amazing card. It's basically a fucking cheap Percival. Yeah, a really cheap Percival. It's searchable, too. Uh, let's look at Kaiser, though. Let's look at... What does the guy do? Yeah, Dragonic Kaiser Vermilion. The Blood. What? That's why he said that. <laughs> Act. Vanguard, once per turn, costs counter plus one, put a card from your hand into your soul. And this unit, until the end of turn, this unit uh, gets 5k and drive plus one. And when, would it, uh, and when it would attack, it battles all of your opponent's front row units. If you put a Dragonic Kaiser Vermilion into your soul for this cost, this unit gets 10k critical plus one. And it doesn't say instead. So basically, you put a Dragon Kaiser Vermilion from your hand into your soul for a CB, you gain 15k, a drive, and a crit. His other ability is Act Vanguard Cost Soul Blast, a card with Kaiser in its card name. This unit gets Drive plus one until the end of turn. At the end of the turn, deal this unit one damage. So, not what we were expecting, one bit. Like we saw the whole attack everything or in this case just the front row and my prediction for this card was so off uh-huh we thought it was going to gain the original kaiser name because of the grade one and because of how the deck wants to function we were wrong on that <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be some kind of jump ride skill it was going to ride the og vermilion if it hit their opponent all of your opponent's rear guards um this was something completely different this is new um this is different that that second skill is not once per turn Nope, you can keep ditching, or you can keep soul blasting all the Kaisers. And keep gaining drive checks, but keep in mind, for every soul blast, you gain a damage at the end of turn. So you basically are playing final turn. <laughs> oh my god, I gotta ask your question later. He um, did it, yes. He oh, did, it. did it. Oh, that's great. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's cool. You don't have to have Draconic Kaiser Vermilion for the cost, so you can still just get the plus drive and the 5k. I mean, the best part about this is you can ride the blood. You can use the grade two, ride the blood. Mm -hmm. You can use the blood, put Kai uh, Dragonic Kaiser into your soul. Now you have two Kaisers in your soul. You can soul blast two, have five dry checks on a 27 double critical Vanguard. With five van uh, five uh, unit swings because you have two Excel circles. Exactly. Well, your opponent's probably grade two. Pretty much. And then you end your turn and you take two damage, but it's like plus minus. Okay. Like five cards, extra, five extra cards in hand, like what? I mean, if you didn't kill your opponent and you survive their follow-up, you're going to be doing a lot next turn. You're not wrong. Anyway, moving on. Uh, more Kagero! <laughs> more Kagero. Uh, Break Breath Dragon. Auto rear guard at the end of the battle that it attacked. If your opponent's rear guard was retired this turn, cost, retire this unit, and draw a card. Auto, when rode upon, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. If he didn't retire, uh, you get the draw card. I mean, it's a very good staple. Well, not staple, but very good generic card that can go into anything. Like, I put it in Blade Master. And um, it works, just because Blade Master blows up the board and you put a vision token in this in the front row, it's like, twin drive, this thing swings, retires itself, draws me a card. I mean, it does what um, 
Berserk Dragon was wanting to do, but it's free. Yeah, it's really good. I'm, I'm an overall decent card. I, I'm, mm. I can't say nothing more about it. It's pretty. And this card got revealed in Monthly Bush Road. That's not all they got revealed in Monthly Bush Road. No, nope. they decided to throw all of Neo Nectar at us. <sighs> yep, not even a exaggeration. Literally all of Neo Nectar. We're gonna go from the bottom up. I'm going to see where the bottom is. I guess that's the bottom, bottom yeah. There. We're going to go from the bottom up. Start with a grade one. Made in a flower carpet. That's a fun name. Mm -hmm. Auto Vanguard Rearguard. When placed, you may call a plant token to rearguard. That's it. And its other ability is auto drop zone. At the end of your turn, retire two plant tokens, return this unit into your hand, and this ability may only hard ones per turn. Mm -hmm. So not only do you make a free token by just placing it, mm -hmm. You also can put it back into your hand by killing two plant tokens on the board at the end of your turn. From a drop zone. Yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ, that's stupid. Yeah. Um, then we got, where are we at? Maiden of Fall Vod. Um, auto, when placed from hand to rear guard with a plant token, draw a card. And this unit gets power plus five until you end turn. So another break crowd ability. Um, yeah, just, if you don't want, you want to get rid of your pesky five for a 15, here you go. I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. And you draw a card back. Yeah. So it's those. easy plusing. Exactly. And then last, but not least, oh, sorry, no. Maiden of Stand Peony. <laughs> I saw where you was going. <laughs> Auto Vanguard Rearguard, when placed, call up to one plant token to Rearguard. If this unit is on Vanguard, call up to two plant tokens instead of one. Auto Vanguard, when it attacks, Cannibalist 1, retire four Rearguards. Call four plant tokens to rear guard. If your opponent's finger is greater or greater, this unit and all of your plant tokens get 10k until the end of turn. High standard, Katrina. Now, they 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 really want this effect and people to play it. Yep. That, that's all I can say about this. Like they really want you to play the Katrina effect. Rather, it's being a fixed nerf version, or possibly unbanning Katrina. So Not five attacks. <laughs> Guaranteed five attacks, uh, at least 30k columns. Mm -hmm. Decent. And you don't use any resource. You literally do almost don't use any of your resource. Because look at this way. You place uh, you place Peony. I want to call her Katrina. You know what? I'm going to call her Katrina. You place Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> you make two plant tokens. You place the grade one. You, call you make up. another plant token. Now, with two cards out of your hand, you're getting five attacks. Yep. And the fun part about this is the grade one brings itself back at the end of the turn by retiring the plant tokens you got from the grade three. Yeah, and you can just retire the front rows if, or the back row. You, I mean, fuck! Yeah. You're gonna do this in the future, and we're gonna do it probably against the worst matchup it can have, or or the, the deck it's gonna face is its worst, uh, its best. Neonect is probably facing its best matchup. Let's yeah. say it like that. So fuck. <laughs> Anyway, I think we got one more. No, no, that's, that's it. it. That was all the leaks for this week. But next week, next week is a fun one because on Tuesday stream we're getting Gastiel. The boy is back. Predictions already are that he's gonna do what Gastiel Stride does and start copying abilities. Mm -hmm. And then Friday, ooh, I'm excited for this one. We're getting Tachikaze, little ba uh, battle dragon, Giga No Blazer. Light not little. Hmm? Like. Or whatever. <laughs> Regardless, we're getting him. I'm rubbing off on I'm, you. I'm, I'm excited to see what this Tachi unit is going to do. If it's going to gauge, mm. if it's going to, you know, do Gaia's whole thing. I don't know. I'm excited. Give me a fun day. Yep. But before we go to the news segment, if you're interested in picking up any of these cards that we just mentioned, go check out Triple Sleeve TCG. You got great deals on singles, clan splits, and even cases, so check out their website. Link will be in the description. So, we got two pieces of news that we want to cover, and thank you, Chris, from Different Fine for providing these and just causing panic in our heads nonstop. Yeah, because, you know, if there wasn't already panic enough about the topic, here's more. Like, <laughs> like, all right, there's two, two specific tweets, like, there was so many tweets that the man made that just made me go, what? But there's two specific ones I want to cover. First one is that according to supervisors of clan selection's development, some units in clan selection refuse to receive gifts and the blessing of the gift from Cray. Uh, Nakayo Sensei said that what uh, said what kind of twist could these other units have? So this is already apparent with chaos. Yes, 
So this means we're going to see more units like Chaos without marker gift markers. And our good prediction is the fact that it's going to be the Drift Riders, the whole that, you know... Gastiel and Valios. Valios and possibly more. We the, don't know. Pretty much the Apostles. Maybe. Yeah. So that's an interesting uh, fun fact. Uh, apparently, Chris, and as well as us now, just now realized the Bushiro has been referring to the Overdress stream on the 19th as Vanguard Project 2.0. Could this be something much bigger than we expect? So, ah! they already announced that they're picking Vanguard, its own separate day. Because we're going to get a lot of information about this. 2.0? And now we're hearing that it's Project 2.0. Uh, I think this is the first time. I can't remember if they referred the reboot as, as 1.0. Because if they didn't, then that means this is going to be the biggest change since the rigged Vanguard ever launched. I can't do a resolution right now. I, I, it could be still 2.0, but could this just be them going, well, 10 year anniversary, 10 was 1.0. Now we're going into the, you know, forward to 20, and this is going to be 2.0. No. I know. So th this is basically, it's going to be game changing. They're probably going to change the whole fundamentals of the game changing. Because Project 2.0 means big things coming. Um, Obviously, you're getting I'm a new mechanic. So, uh, no, I'm, 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 I'm so fucking terrified of this. For the simple fact that we have zero... At the time of recording, there's 11 days till this fucking stream, and we have zero information. Like, this is so big that they could just possibly even just get rid of all drive checks, uh, checks in general. We have zero trigger. information! <laughs> we don't know what this is, but it's going to be huge. That's all we know. It's going to be huge. Jesus fucking Christ. So, hey. if you really want to know how huge... Stay tuned on the, the, 19th. the 19th when we're live streaming. Yeah. Our reaction to how big this is gonna be. But, but, Alex, Alex, before, before the 19th live stream. Yes, There's gonna be the one more special live stream happening. As many of you probably noticed, we hit 5K. Woo! We're gonna celebrate more truly and passionately mm -hmm. on Monday, January 11th, mark your calendars at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. We're gonna be doing a special, just normal, Stream, no gameplay, no box opening, no nothing, just hanging out, chilling. Yeah. Oh, granted, I can't say it's normal. We're celebrating 5K in a very special way, aren't we? We're doing this shit. While answering your questions. While answering your question, which means it's gonna even more suck, because if you eat this and then start talking, it just makes it worse. So. I'm dreading this. Yes. So that's gonna be a great stream on January 11th at. Uh, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come join us and watch us suffer. Oh, it's gonna be great. Oh, it's gonna be great. I've done it once. I know it. What's coming? You haven't. You don't know. We're gonna suffer the curse. You're gonna suffer the curse. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think we covered everything. You got yep. anything else you want to talk about? I have a lot to talk about with this, but there's not enough time. That's a whole nother stream. Well, we'll save it for, uh, we'll save it for Monday and we'll save it from the 19th. Yes. Well. Because, oof, I got a lot to talk about with Project 2.0. Yep. Anyway, we're going to wrap this episode right there. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. This was episode 90, oh, sorry, 89, 90s next week. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like the video, please leave a like. Share with your friends. Comment down below what you think 2.0 has in store. Or better yet, comment down below if you think this fool can handle the chip. <laughs> anyway, if you want to see it happen, subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell to get notified. Maybe even follow us on Facebook and join our Discord. Other than that, thank you again, everybody, for 5K. And I've been Philip. This is Alex. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Woo! <laughs> You're dreading that chip. I'm not. You're ready. dreading that chip I'm so ready. much. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>